Giannis, um, I know you tend to focus on yourselves, but um, no Robert Williams, no Al Horford. I mean, there's clear size advantage for you and Brooke and Bobby. I know the paint is important, but tonight especially, did, did it feel like it was important to, I think the, I think maybe it was a 20 to 30 point advantage in the paint for you guys. Was it important to kind of get in there, establish yourselves inside? Yeah, I uh, was able to, you know, especially Brooke and, uh, and uh, Drew, you know, getting the paint, finishing the paint, get some uh, offensive rebounds, you know, throw it over the top to the post up. I was able to get some easy one in the paint, in the paint. Uh, but at the end of the day, like our main focus is not to get to the paints, to you know make good decisions, play good basketball, find one another. And uh, there's some nights like tonight that you're gonna be able to score a lot in the paint, and there's gonna be some nights that you're gonna score more from uh, the three-point line. But I think we have so much variety, we have so much talent, we have so many guys that can score from the paint, from the three-point line. That you know every night is gonna be different for us. In Brooklyn, you mentioned it was a positive how many close games y'all have been winning. Um, usually it's because in the last two and a half, three, four minutes, the defense really turns up. You know, tonight they didn't score in their final 227. Um, is that sustainable? No, have we gone to play, done a playoff run? Can you guys kind of keep doing that or does it? I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. So we'll see, you know, uh, we'll see. Hopefully, um, we got some luck in our side, and uh, we keep playing good basketball, keep playing with uh, high energy, uh, keep playing with one another, and just taking the position at a time. And hopefully, we got some luck in our side, and uh, we're able to, you know, defend in the last uh, few minutes. You know, but it's not always going to go our way. So you got to be, you got to be ready for that. You know, when it doesn't go your way, like what do you do? Do you put your head down? Or do you keep going? Uh, but hey, I hope luck is on our side, and we're able to do it and uh, win. All the close games that we we play, but you know you always gotta set realistic expectation, and the uh, most realistic expectation right now is to go to Detroit and try to play tomorrow. Um, aside from luck, they score five points in the final five minutes. What do you think was the reason why your defense was able to come together? George Hill. No, I'm joking. Uh, I think uh, just switching, just keeping guys in front of you, just making it tough for them, making it put the ball in the floor and try to create the shots for themselves, you know, uh, not just like um, playing high center or low center and giving them the advantage of them playing two versus one or three versus two, you know, just switch, just one versus one. Like you got to, you know, have that individual pride and keep that guy in front of you. you know? And I think uh, when you have a lineup with Wes, with uh, Drew, with Chris, with me, uh, with Bobby out there or with PC or whoever comes in, or George Hill, it just makes it harder because we're able to switch, we're able to keep guys in front of us, and uh, they just got to make a decision. And, you know, that's what we want them to do. We don't want a lot of people touching the ball. We just want one guy to basically beat us. And there's going to be nights that that guy's going to be able to beat us, and there's going to be nights that um, one guy cannot beat the five people. Uh, Bobby had that corner three in transition for you late. I think he had another one in the final five minutes, upper quadrant, that you assisted on him as well. Um, at, at this point, just like how much trust do you have for him? And do you kind of go out of your way to bring a defender to you so then you can find Bobby? Or how do you kind of do that? No, when he's open, you got to give him the ball. Um, simple as that. When Bobby's open and uh, he can get his feet set, you got to de deliver him the ball. He's proven in the past that he's able to knock down shots in early in the game, late in the game. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so whenever it's open, you gotta, you gotta. If you can see it, and if you can gather your feet and you know make a good pass to him, you gotta give him the ball. Around the All Star break, I had a conversation with Bobby, and I said, "What do you want to work on for the rest of the season?" And he said, "I want to be able to switch so I can be in the game at the end." And I'm wondering how much have you seen that effort from him? You just listed him, you know, talking about being able to switch at the end of the games. How much effort have you seen from him in that area? He, he tries. He's, he's always ready. He's always out there trying to compete, uh, try to win. Um, everybody's going to make mistakes. Um, everybody, you know, going to get scored on. But you see that he's, he always tries. And, um, you know, as a teammate, I love that. You know, I love to have a guy next to me down the stretch early in the game. No matter uh, what time and score is, the guy that's going to try is going to give his all. And Bobby always gives everything he has. So. I definitely see that he's putting a lot of effort in like keeping guys in front and uh, switching up and you know taking that individual pride to not get to not get scored on. 
What's uh, impressed you the most about the way that Brooke has fit back in so well and like seemed to kind of just kind of playing so seamlessly with, with you guys again? I know he's, I'm not going to say he's easy, he's just, Brooke is so talented, you know, like he can be threat from the three-point line, but he's, he's so big, you know, offensive rebounds, you can just throw the ball up there, he's going to get it and he's going to finish. You know, he can knock down free throws. He's just so big. He's, he's a threat, you know, no matter what he is on the floor. And he uh, defensively, he's Brook. He's one of the best defensive players in uh, the league. Um, and he makes us better, you know, offensively and defensively. What kind of a difference has it made? I know early on it was you and Bobby. It's the only two bigs. Like, how much of a difference has the second half felt on you uh, just having a third big to throw into rotation between him and Serge and et cetera? Obviously, we were able to get some rest. Um, rest, you know. I think uh, we played so many games, just me and Bobby, as the only big. And um, obviously, we guys that love to compete and love to be out there and play hard and give everything for our team. But just having a third guy, a fourth guy that can also come in and also be a threat and also, you know, dominate in the paint and also block shots. And we have a guy that obviously right now is not in the rotation, but he's always, he's ready to play search, you know, no matter where his name is called, he's ready to play, he's ready to help the team. It just gives us so many options. And, um, you know, obviously now we're going to, in the playoffs, it's going, to, it's going to be different no matter what coach tells us to do. It might be eight man rotation, nine, t 10, whatever the case might be. But just having those, two guys in the last 20 games of the season. I think it definitely helped me and Bobby just being able to get some rest, being able to get in rhythm. Um, that's pretty much just being able to get some break. And then last one for me, just when you compare this stretch of like getting ready for the playoffs, you know, getting ready and such, like how does it compare to last year? Like just your feeling and like, do you feel, you know, more and less anxiety? Do you feel like any less pressure? Like how, how would you compare this feeling no, now compared to last year? No, I think obviously like a lot of people think that once you, uh, you know, once you win a championship and you succeed in life, like, yeah, there's no, there's no, you know, pressure. You know, I don't, I don't really agree. Like, uh, obviously I don't, not try to focus in the pressure as much. I just try to focus in, enjoy the game. Uh, but at the end of the day, your mind always going to find something to replace that, you know, like almost like, okay, you won one time. Now you're like your mind wants to like win a second time or a third time and do the, like, you know. So it's almost like you let go of the past and you think about what's next. So when you think about what's next, it's always like if you care about the game and you care about winning and you care about, you know, uh, helping your team be one of the best. It's always going to find something, a new motivation, a new goal that uh, is going to be in front of you. So it's pretty much the same, you know. Um, I've been a part of, I think this is my seventh playoff. Uh, about to go now. We have two more games. We keep jumping in the future. In two more games, this is going to be my seventh time playing the playoffs, and it's the same team. Go out there, enjoy the game, compete, and try to win games as much as possible, and put yourselves in the position to to win. There's nothing. It doesn't really change, you know. You guys have so many good defenders on your team, but when you're watching Drew, I think he had three steals tonight. What is the, I guess, the art of the steal, or what's it like watching him make those plays defensively in a game? Love it, <laughs> you know, just being out there and you know, try to take possession at a time and try to get a stop. And all of a sudden, Drew put his hand in the ball and get a steal. Like, you love it, you know. We're going the other way, so you know, he's he's so capable to make the the right play down the stretch. You know, offensively but defensively, he's he's unbelievable. He's always gonna be in the right spot in the right, you know, at the right time. So uh, I love that he's in my team. Uh, and he definitely gives us gives us energy, gives us momentum to go the other way and try to uh, figure out how we're going to score. Your mom was in the house today. This is a pretty good birthday present for her, this win? Or not maybe? She's been a part of a lot of wins, so I don't know. I don't know if she – I don't even know if she was watching the game. She was probably eating some cake. I don't know, you know, but I hope she had some fun. I, I saw it up in the uh, in the screen. She was smiling, so I'm happy. Just wondering, last week after a game, you had said playing basketball was kind of like making art. And I was just wondering if you could expand on that, just how, what are the similarities in your mind? And just after uh, every game is an opportunity to create. That's what I think. Um, I just tried to let go of the pass. 
and uh, I imagine like a canvas in front of me and today was you know a game that I was able to create you know tomorrow when I wake up I reset throw that in the uh, in the storage in the garage but I don't know where you guys keep your uh, canvas if you have some I keep them in the basement and tomorrow I have an opportunity to create another one so I just you know let my mind I always want to be motivated I want to be fresh I want to let go of the past good or bad you play well it doesn't matter you know, if you play well and you keep uh, hold on in the pass, it, it prevents you from playing well again. Because if you had 40 the, the previous game, you're like, oh, okay, you know, I had 40 the previous game. Today I can just like be sloppy with the ball. You know, so that was that art that was created. Today I reset. I get a new canvas. I try to create a new art, something that I enjoy to do. I, I love playing basketball. You know, so when I every position that I'm out there, I try to create, create good position. Good position for myself, good positions for Chris, make the right decisions, you know, just just keep creating, you know, until the end. Uh, last question, Mark. I feel like we don't talk much about you being in contention for the scoring champion. And I think that's because of you, because we know what you care about. You care about the team, you care about health, your priorities are otherwise. And I know that you wouldn't change your style of play, but do you track that at all? Is that one of the, not at all, not a little, not, you don't ask anybody, you don't look. No, he holds you back. Like, he, he holds you back. I really believe in this. You don't get to your full potential when you worry about the wrong things. You know, and I'm really, I'm obsessed with basketball. I really want to be the best that I can be. And, you know, I, I've, I've showed it times and times that I'm about that. I'm not about scoring champ. I can care less. You know, I'm not about... Uh, MVP, I can care less. You know, I just want to be the best player that I can be, and whatever that takes me, I'm okay with that. You know, so if I keep worrying about if I can win the, the scoring champ and uh, who I've done it in the past and who I'm in, cup, no, 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 no. It takes me away from the goals that I really want to uh, achieve. So I'm for, but I know a lot of people follow it. You know, I know, I know probably my teammates follow it or my brother follow it, but I try to close my social media throw all those distractions away and just focus on how can I, tomorrow, today, how can I get better, how can I read my, who, how can I make free throws, how can I improve my jump shot, how can I be a better teammate, how can I be stronger, more explosive, how can I make good decisions, how can I enjoy the game, how can I focus on myself without being selfish, just, you know, focus on myself by making the good decisions for myself and my teammates, how can I be in the moment and don't worry about the future, like, those are the things that allow me to reach my full potential and those are the things I worry about every single day, not scoring champ. MVPs, Boston that we just played. Now we got we got Detroit tomorrow.